Hi, my name is Jamila Bouchard. I am the speech language pathologist here at Community Work and Independence, and I'm here today to do to do New York State OPWDD's prevention of choking and aspiration. Today we will learn the definition of choking and aspiration, common issues that people with developmental disabilities face when eating or drinking, the identification and reduction of hazards through observation of the person and their environment, interventions to reduce the risk of choking and aspiration, appropriate first aid responses to an incident. We'll start with the definition of choking. Choking is the blocking of airway by food, liquids, or foreign objects. Aspiration is the inhalation of those foods, liquid, or foreign objects into the lungs. That's also known as going down the wrong pipe. This can lead to serious complications such as aspiration pneumonia. For, for people with developmental disabilities, common issues exist that place a person at risk for choking and aspiration. If the person has decreased muscle coordination and or tone, which is causing problems with their choking, their chewing or swallowing, this can be an, a problem with our individuals with cerebral palsy. The person has difficulty holding their head up or sitting up straight. The person has impaired mobility, which leaves them unable to properly position themselves for adequate swallowing. This is a major issue for our individuals who are in wheelchairs. Some other common issues include the person has been diagnosed with gastroesophageal reflux disease, commonly referred to as GERD or acid reflux. This is a very common medical problem among individuals that we work with. If the person has dental concerns or problems, if they're having pain in their teeth or they've had several teeth pulled, they have new dentures, those sorts of things. The person takes medication that affects the muscles of the throat or mouth and can cause delayed swallowing. Certain antibiotics, ACE inhibitors, antihistamines, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, those can all cause issues with, with swallowing. Some other issues include if a person has poor self-eating skills and is prone to food stuffing or rapid eating, if the person has difficulty swallowing anything with an inappropriate food or liquid consistency, if the person has been assigned to a staff member who has not been trained in supporting people with their eating drinking. This last one should not occur. Um, all staff members who are preparing food or feeding our individuals have to have uh, gone through the much longer two-hour training which includes a whole section about food preparation and a hands-on portion. Prevention is critical. Some incidents are completely preventable. Mealtime can be pleasurable for some and a difficult time for others. If we identify problems and develop interventions early, we can ensure the health and the safety of our individuals and make eating and drinking a pleasant experience, which is what we want it to be. We eat three to four times a day, so we want it to be a good experience. The greatest error made by most treatment teams is to failing to identify the source of the real eating or drinking problems. This can sometimes be difficult and take a lot of time. Treatment teams should routinely consider a wide range of potential causes. Treatment teams typically include occupational therapists, um, a speech language pathologist, staff from day programs, family, staff from home. Um, they can include a variety of individuals. The prevention and prevention strategies should be identified and noticed, noted in the ISP, day hub plan, risk assessments, and dining plans. How a person eats should be discussed during the ISP, and if risks are present, a good plan of prevention should be discussed, written down, and shared with all staff that support the individuals, including day program staff. Here at CWI, that comes in the form of a dining plan, typically. Observation is the greatest incident prevention tool you have. When helping an individual eat or drink, please make sure that your intention and focus stays on the individual. What to observe? Does someone else dine this person? Does this person cough or choke during or after finishing their meal or beverage? Does food or fluid fall out of this person's mouth? Some other important things to consider are 
does this person regularly refuse, refuse liquids? Answer yes, if they will not drink for certain staff, or they only like certain drinks. Does this person regularly refuse food? Answer yes, if they will not eat for certain staff, or do they, they do not like certain food or consistencies. Important to note, if an individual's eating or drinking patterns changes, please notify the nurse or supervisor immediately. Other things to observe are, does this person have a medical condition, such as cerebral palsy, acid reflux, difficulty swallowing, or hiatal hernia? This can cause major issues when dieting. Does this person have chronic chest congestion, frequent pneumonia, rattling when breathing, persistent cough, or does this person chronically use cough or asthma medication. This is important to note if the person has been coughing all day versus somebody who starts coughing after they drink. Um, we're a little bit more concerned about our individuals who suddenly start coughing after they've been eating or drinking as opposed to they've just been coughing all day, which may be more of a sign of a cold or something. Does a person eat or drink too rapidly or stuff food into their mouth, which can cause choking? Does this person have extreme food seeking or liquid seeking behavior that may cause injury to them or others? Does this person engage in pica behavior? Some individuals with developmental disabilities have a condition called pica, which causes them to eat non-edible items such as rubber gloves, batteries, paper clips, cigarette butts, paper. It's very important to pay close attention to the environment of the home and day program if there is any individuals with pica living there. Interventions are methods to help reduce the risk of choking and aspiration. Know the individual's written dining plan. Dining plans can be updated at any time if something changes in the person's medical status um, or we've just noticed some issues that the person's having. So it's important to make sure you've read and are following the most current dining plan. And if you notice a dining plan that is more than a year old, please contact your nurse or um, the OT or, or speech therapist. Prepare the appropriate food texture and liquid consistency per the physician's order. This is just as important as making sure that we're giving meds correctly. Only train staff to assist with eating. Uh, again, like I men er mentioned earlier, this is only staff members who have completed the full two-hour training with the, the food prep portion as well. If there is any swallowing difficulties, consult with a nurse or supervisor immediately. Carefully stop a person from eating if the person coughs, chokes, or gags. Call for help and apply first aid if needed to ensure the safety of the individual. When things like this happen, it's really important that we remain calm and that we um, not show our anxiety about what's happening to our individuals as that can make them more anxious and more upset about what's happening and just make the situation worse. It's also important that if we, how we're stopping our individuals from eating or how we're removing the food, if they start coughing, you shouldn't be grabbing the food and yanking the food away and putting it in another room as that may cause the individual to become highly agitated. Um, simply move the food to the side, tell the person that once they stop coughing and they regain their breath, then you'll give it back to them. Interventions. Some common interventions are to maintain a slow pace of eating and to decrease the size of the bites. Make sure that the individual is seated for meals and snacks to to a, a proper sitting position to encourage safe swallowing. Our individuals should not be tipped all the way back in their wheelchairs or, or lying down when they're eating. That's absolutely not safe. Do not engage in power struggles with persons who, that have behavioral issues when dining. This can be a major issue. Um, it can make the whole dining, the whole mealtime more upsetting for the individual and the staff person when you get into a power struggle. Maintain a calm environment while eating and drinking. Try not to be shouting across the room, turn the TV down, or better yet, off during meals. Make sure it's nice and calm and quiet for the most part. Supervision. Supervision is critical for choking prevention. Supervise all individuals when they are eating or drinking meals, drinking at meals, snack time, med administration in the program or in the community. That includes uh, picnics, ball games, movies, restaurants. Training protocols. Staff should be trained in the prescribed food and liquid consistencies. Like I mentioned before, that's in that much, much longer um, 
the two hour training. There's more information about the food and liquid consistencies in that training. Important to note on training protocols, if there's any possibility of a person choking, please do not wait to call 911 or uh, activate the emergency medical services and assist the person immediately by applying the abdominal thrust as per your training. If a person is assigned to one-to-one -to -one staffing, the staff must follow one-to-one -one protocol. Staff should be trained in the dining plan for each individual they support. For the most part, training in the dining plans here at CWI consists of us sending the dining plan out to you. You read it and, if, uh, and go ahead and sign it once you've done that, making sure that you understand everything that it entails. If you have any questions, please let your nurse or supervisor know. The universal sign for choking is putting your hands there at your throat. If you see someone doing that, please call for help. Activate your emergency medical system. Use your first aid training and apply the abdominal thrusts. And seek medical treatment for your individual as soon as possible. OPWDD sent us out a little update back in November. They want us to remind you of some important, important items. Uh, choking occurs when a person's airway becomes blocked by food or other objects or when liquid enters the airway during swallowing. It is very important that people remain aware of choking hazards, know how to prevent choking, and know how to respond when a person appears to be choking. Choking indicators. Uh, individuals may not be able to communicate that they're choking or have something stuck in their throat, esophagus, or airway. Knowing the sounds and gestures that are typical for a person in distress will assist in recognizing that a person is in trouble. There may be only one side of choking or there may be many uh, visual or auditory signs, including the following. Grabbing at the neck or throat, appearing distressed or panicked, waving the arms, gasping for air, gagging, displaying continuous, unusual, or severe forceful coughing, this does not include one or two dry coughs. This is more um, forceful coughing. The skin, lips, and nails turn red and then blue as oxygen levels drop. You really shouldn't be letting it get to that point. Um, that's a little bit further along. Noisy breathing or wheezing can indicate a partially blocked airway that can become a fully blocked airway. Um, knowing your individuals is really key here, knowing if they always sound sort of wheezy or if this is after they were eating, you notice some, they notice they sound a little bit wheezy. If a person is conscious and cannot cough, speak, or breathe, assume that the airway is blocked. If the person is unconscious, then assume that the airway is blocked. If a person abruptly leaves their room to go to another room, for example, the bathroom, this could be a sign that they're having a choking issue, but knowing your individuals is really key, key here because we have some individuals who have behavioral issues regarding eating and will suddenly get up and leave. So knowing if that's typical for your individual or if that's something that's highly unusual for them. Your training is almost complete. Now there is a four question quiz for you there. We ask that you please complete that quiz. There's a little section there at the bottom for comments and questions. Please feel free to add any questions about the material that you have there. And me or Joel or Dawn will get back to you. Have a nice day.